Hey everyone, this video is about survey analysis part one. So here we're going to be talking about item analysis and reliability with Cronbach's alpha. So this is based on the classical test theory, where your observed score is equal to your true score plus error. There are a lot of assumptions with CTT, and they are pretty much all assumed. It's not something that we really test. So for item analysis, this is something that all surveys should do. And for this, we are looking at your continuous items. So continuous items are the rating scales, typically. Agree to disagree, or frequency, or some sort of a rating. Um, you are not doing this with your categorical items. So if you asked race, ethnicity, grade, location, those kind of questions are not used here. You would do descriptive analysis on those and describe them differently. So when we're applying classical test theory, we're asking three questions that we're going to focus on in this video. The first one is, the, are the items good? And what items are the hardest or the easiest? So to establish if the item is good, we want the item to correlate to the whole. So we don't want it to just be way out in left field. We want them to be correlated to each other. Um, and that's typically above a 0.4. When we're looking at items, if, which ones are the hardest and the easiest for our participants, we're comparing the mean scores. So assuming that five is highly agreeable and one is disagree, then the higher scores are the easiest to agree with and the lower scores are the hardest to agree with. We're also asking about reliability. So for Cronbach's alpha, we're really asking, are the participants answering consistently? So this is where we can start to tell our participants just clicking through the survey, or are they being consistent in their answers? This also allows us to see if there are any problematic items. So there will be a column that is Cronbach's alpha if the item is deleted, in which case we're looking at can we get more reliability if we remove an answer or remove an item? So are participants not reliable on one item? And that makes it problematic. Then thirdly, we're looking at scale. So if we chose a one to five scale, classical test theory assumes that the scale categories are correct. So if you chose one to five, it's correct. If you chose one to seven, it's correct. But what we really want to do is we want to make sure that all of the choices are used. In order to do this, we're going to run frequencies on our items and check min and max. So if the minimum is two on a specific item and they had a one choice, that means that that one was never used. The same if you have a max of five, but SPSS is reporting it as a max of four, then you know that that fifth category wasn't used. So let's look at how we do this in SPSS. It is very straightforward, and there's just some things that we are going to click through. So when we go into SPSS, we have our items. In this case, I have 15 items. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Scale, Reliability Analysis. Make sure that all of my items get put over here. I could do just five items, but I want to do all 15. And we want to check item, scale, scale of deleted. You can check summaries if you would like. Um, and then if you are interested in how each item is correlated to the other items individually, then you can check the correlation table. We hit OK, we hit OK, and here's all of our data. So Cronbach's alpha here, you want to verify that there are 15 items. So if you put in 15 and it's only reporting 14, there's a problem. Here's our Cronbach's alpha. So 0.86 is very reliable. We have our item statistics. This is usually reported in whatever paper you are writing. So this is a really nice table. We have each item's mean, standard deviation, and then our sample size. This right here is our correlation matrix. So this is looking at how each item correlates with the other items. So we can see that it's not very correlated with certain items and it's more correlated with others. If you are not interested in this, then you don't have to check that box. This table right here is your gold when it comes to reliability statistics. So it is looking at each item, so item one, 
and this one right here is what you want to look at. So this is the item total correlation that we want to be above a 0.4. And this is saying that this item is correlated to the whole survey, the whole 15 items, which is really good in this case. We can also look at this last table, the convex alpha if the item is deleted. If you recall, our convex alpha was a 0.86. So deleting item one actually makes our alpha go down. It makes it less reliable, showing that this is a good item. So it's correlated to the whole, and we actually lose reliability if we delete it. So going down the list, we can see that this one is just at the breaking point, um, but it's still showing that it's a good item. We're not losing reliability, and it still meets our standard. If you want more information, um, you can look in the comments below for, t for a link or in the output that I gave you at the very top, there is a link with a little bit more information on how to.